Okay. I imagine that, like me, you're feeling pretty inspired about undertaking an adventure, geographical journey, getting out and talking to, to these guys and the guys from the first half about how, how you get out there and, and see the world. The final speakers for this evening did exactly that. They spent a weekend here at RGS IBG on an Explore event. And they came up with an awesome idea. I will allow Michelle Ellison and Mel Joe to tell you more about how they stood up for river science. <laughs> Hi everybody, so I'm Michelle and this is Mel and it was in July last year that we paddle boarded this, the River Thames from source to sea. And that's right. It came, the idea came here on this stage. We were sitting where you are now and listening to um, the concept of expedition planning, risk assessments, and combining adventure and science. And we were left on the Sunday evening with one question. From what you've learned this weekend, what will you take away and create between now and next year? And Mel and I started getting our thinking caps on. I was in the Welsh mountains and it came to me. I wanted to paddleboard the length of the Thames from source to sea. I texted Mel and she was completely on board, although she had only ever paddleboarded twice before. Um, and neither of us knew the length of the river um, or how many days it would take us. Um, so we did the only thing we all do. We went on Google. <laughs> and we quickly found out that a lot of people were actually not paddleboarding to the South End. They were hopping off at Putney Bridge, and this is the reason. The Port of London Authority, who are responsible for that section of the river, were saying no to paddleboarders going through central London. But we didn't want to do anything illegal, um, uh, but we wanted to get to the end, to the sea. And so we did the only thing we could. We asked them for a conversation, and they ignored us. Um, so we were a little bit persistent, and we requested a meeting, and they said yes. And so before we knew it, we were having a meeting with the PLA. Um, that meeting was a little bit um, shocking for us because they were saying no. Um, in some ways, they were telling us all the risks that were going to happen to us on the river and why paddleboarding is not allowed. It wasn't going well, and during that meeting, there was a turning point. We said, well, what happens if there was a possible future where paddleboarders would be able to? What would need to happen? Whether it was us, amateurs, or some professionals going down through central London. And it was at that point they started talking about risk assessments and passage plans. Like, okay. At the end of the meeting, they hadn't said no. So we decided to take on the challenge. Three months of putting together risk assessments, passage plans, and working with them to get the requirement that we needed. We started our trip without the requirement. Um, but it was at the source of the sea, I mean, also at the source of the Thames, so it was okay. And we eventually got our, our permission we needed just a couple of days before we hit central London. The other thing that we were doing during that whole time before we got onto the river was we decided to share our journey. So using YouTube again, we all know that on Google, we went online and created our first website using a tutorial from YouTube. Uh, we also connected with an amazing charity, Tree Aid, where every one pound we raised planted one tree in Africa. We got into a partnership with Active360, a brilliant paddleboarding company based at Kewbridge and other locations around London where they supplied us with the much needed paddle boards, because we don't own our own, um, and also the much needed training advice and guidance that we needed. But more importantly, it was on this stage in Explore where we met James Burrell, a, a scientist, and he inspired us with the idea of citizen science. And so we thought, how can we incorporate that into our journey? And that's where we found Thames 21, an amazing charity who has 300 volunteers going down to the foreshore of the river collecting water samples to understand the health of our river. Mel will tell you a little bit about that shortly. As well as the planning, the most important thing was the people. So we had so many conversations in the six months that we took to plan this trip. But just for two people that I'm going to highlight in this. So you've got the kayaker, his name is Harry Whelan. He's an amazing adventurer. He is the only person in the UK that the PLA would allow to, us to go through central London with. He wasn't on social media and he was a hard man to track down. Um, 
But it was a, he, he, and, he, and he lives outside of London. So at 3 o'clock in the morning on a Friday when we were going through central London, he, um, he drove into London, paddled up the Thames, met us in his kayak at Putney Bridge. We said, hey, we're Mel and Michelle, um, obviously, because we were the only ones with paddleboards at that time. <laughs> and, um, and we spent the after or the morning with him, and he was amazing. He's um, kayaked around the UK and around Ireland a couple of times and had loads of stories. And the last person that I'll just highlight is the guy on the paddleboard. His name is Dave, and his dog is Basil. And we met him at a point of our trip. Um, we'd just gone through Oxford. We'd been paddling for nine hours that day. We were so tired and we were quiet. It was, it was a hard day. Our hands were like this. And, um, and he really lifted our spirits. He was the only guy that we didn't know along the river who was on a paddle board. And, um, and he paddled with us for a couple of hours. And so by the time we got to the pup, we were in a really good mood. <laughs> but Mel's gonna tell you a bit about the journey. <laughs> oh, okay. Hit the green button. Um, so our aim was to travel uh, 206 miles, negotiate 47, lock, uh, yeah, 47 locks, paddle through one of the busiest commercial waterways in Europe, cross three major shipping lanes, and then end in South End Pier. Um, so the official source of the river is located here at Thames Head. Um, and for anyone who's been out that way, you'll find that it is marked by a rock in a field. Um, and it's <laughs> there's a distinct lack of any sort of real water flow. Um, so this was going to prove a little bit problematic for us, given that the premise of our adventure was to paddle from source to sea. Uh, so what we ended up doing was we got on our bikes um, and we cycled for fir the first 36 kilometres along the Thames path um, until we could get into the water where it was deep enough further downstream. Uh, so at Letch Lake, we swapped our bikes for our boards um, and we set off. Um, so at this point, we were self-supporting. So we were carrying all of our gear on our boards for the next 11 days. Um, and we, were also, we also camped along the full length of the non-tidal part of the Thames. Um, so we were camping at, um, there's lots of really amazing locks that we camped at, um, kind of grassy verges, conveniently located next to country pubs. Um, yeah. <laughs> the odd spot of wild camping, um, don't camp here, it's full of nettle, um, but we, we did one evening. Um, we were definitely faced with some challenges um, along the way, and probably the biggest one um, was the unpredictable nature of the British summer. Um, so we kind of, we planned to get, you know, do this trip in July. Um, so we, we did have some pretty glorious days, um, but then they were peppered with um, headwinds. Um, so yeah, anyway, headwinds and rain, and then we had the combination of headwinds and rain. Um, so it didn't, <laughs> which is probably any paddler's nemesis. Um, and it did make some days um, much more longer and arduous than we anticipated. Um, we were definitely on the water probably longer than we anticipated anyway, so we were kind of, our days were ranged from anywhere from nine hours to 13 hours a day. Uh, despite the challenges, oh, yes, we did have an awful lot of fun. <laughs> so we had created the 101 things to do on a paddleboard challenge, um, where people could submit all their weird and wonderful suggestions, some of which cannot be mentioned on the stage, um, <laughs> and, um, of what one can do on a paddleboard. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yep, we, we did a bit of um, sup yoga, uh, had Mad had his tea party, um, found new weird and wonderful ways um, which to get about when we weren't on the water, uh, and we paddled an awful lot. <laughs> um, I had to say that this was an incredible opportunity to be able to see the river and its landscape and the population transition as we journeyed on. You know, we'd started from this rock in the middle of a paddock, um, we were paddling through kind of reeded walls, through endless countryside, towns, villages, cities, and onwards to the expanse of the ocean. Okay, and we became citizen scientists. Okay. So we got involved um, with, uh, we participated in Thames 21's um, Citizen Science Project, um, and because of the nature of our venture, it meant that we were in a really unique position when it came to taking water samples. Um, so we were able to take water samples along the full length of the river on consecutive days, but probably more pertinently for Thames 21 is that we could take the sample from near enough the centre of the river. Um, so at the moment, there's a lot of really amazing volunteers engaged in this project, um, but they tend to live in much more concentrated areas along the river, and the samples are almost always taken from the foreshore. Uh, so what Thames 21 were interested in is just being able to compare the sample taken from the foreshore to that of the centre, um, and to have a look at similar similarities and differences. Um, and what they found were that our samples were actually very similar to the ones already taken by the volunteers. 
Um, it was really important to us um, that the science um, that we undertook complemented our adventure um, and, it was, and that it was something that we were both interested and passionate about. Um, as recreational users of the river, I do think it is really important to be able to understand and to engage in its care. Um, and this is one of the ways that we could contribute. Um, the other consideration we had was that we were self-supporting and we were time limited. Um, so water sampling kind of fit in perfectly actually with our trip. Um, the kit was really lightweight, was portable, um, it was really easy to use. Um, and it took probably about 15 to Oh, about 10 to 15 minutes out of our day to take the water sample. Um, I know a lot of you will probably be kind of planning adventures both locally and further afield, so um, if you are not already a scientist, I would definitely encourage you to think about how you can include citizen science into your adventure. Okay, um, so it took us, uh, a, it was a bit of a challenge to get here, but eventually we did make it to South End Pier. Um, and we enjoyed our journey last year so much that um, we've decided to come back again this year um, so for more. Um, so, <laughs> um, so in September, we're organizing the first stand-up paddleboard um, relay on the River Thames. Um, and we're going to hopefully involve um, water conservation and citizen science. And we would like to invite you all to come, and come along. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well done.